In this video, I'm going to show you a super quick but useful agent that will automatically find the companies that you are trying to service with Google Maps, and then it's going to pull all the searches that it is returning via an API call. And this can be hundreds and thousands of leads. And then it's going to clean up and store each company in your CRM or database and then research them via Perplexity's research model sonar, you know, finding as much information on that company, like the company's description, emails of the company or employees and anything else. Then it'll create a personalized line for them that'll go into an email and store that lead into instantly where it's going to be ready to automatically outreach to anybody. But as always, let's just get into a super quick demo. So what I'm going to do is we're going to use the hypothetical of us wanting to outreach to, let's say gyms, our company is servicing gyms as our clients. So I'm going to say gyms in Columbus, Ohio. So we'll see the first thing that it's doing. It's going to pass into this Google Maps agent. And this Google Maps agent is given access to a couple different tools. The first tool is we have Google Maps right here. And then we have store in sheets where it's just going to upload everything that we're returning into Google Sheets, which I'll get into in just a second. So if we go to this workflow, this external workflow that it's calling right here. All right, so we have our execution right here. So if I pull this up, we will see that it's making a API call to SERP API. And SERP API is just allowing us to do Google searches and more specifically do Google Maps searches. And then from here, it's going to take all these search listings that it's finding and returning this into our agent. Now, the next step is we're going to take all this information, we're going to pass it to the Google Maps agent, and then we're going to store it in this uh, Google Sheets right here. So we'll see in just a second, it should be finishing up. Okay, so I just finished up. It says the contact information for gyms in Columbus, Ohio has been successfully retrieved and stored in Google Sheets. If you need any more assistance, feel free to ask. But before I show you the CRM, let me show you what this other external tool is doing. So basically this store in sheets, it's going to be passing to an external workflow right here, where the first thing we're doing is we're just cleaning up the information that's being given to us using OpenAI. And then we're going to split up all this information and pass it into Google Sheets. And what it'll look like is this CRM or database, you could call it whatever you will want, just like this. So we have the company name, so we have the fitness loft, and then associated with that, we have the address, the phone number, the website, even the rating that's coming up from the Google Maps search. And then we have the perplexity search and personalized line, and we're going to be filling that in right now so normally this will be activated so for the time being we're just going to be doing everything manually so what we'll do is we're going to run this i'll just um, go ahead and click at the very end normally it'll just recognize that a new record is added into the google sheets it'll determine if it's added a perplexity search or personalized line or not and you'll see that it's filling in everything that it needs right here so right now it is making a complexity search then it's writing its personalized lines through open ai so we can see that it's adding everything in real time so we have this is the perplexity search so this is just finding a bunch of information so we can even open this up we can see we have a description we have emails associated with fitness loft the website which we already have but some more contact information we have revenue that's coming in from this company the founder the founded year so there's so much information that's being pulled from it but i'll have to pause for a second and come back to you guys once it's finished generating and actually comes back with the personalized lines for everything okay so we do have a few personalized lines right here so we see that we have a personalized line that says I love how the fitness law of Columbus creates an uplifting and inclusive environment. I'm truly impressed by how Lifetime has become a leader in the health and wellness industry with over 175 locations. So, I mean, you could prompt this to however you would like and train your agent to respond or create personalized lines in any manner. So it should be relevant to your offer a little bit more. But anyways, you guys kind of get the idea. So, I mean, it's still running and I actually disabled this part where it's going to upload everything into instantly, but that's just because this is for demo sake and I don't want to interfere with any of my other campaigns. Anyways, I wanted to show you guys how you can do this step by step and give you an actual tutorial of how I built this out. But really quick, I wanted to mention that if you're a business owner looking to implement AI agents and other custom AI solutions into your company to increase your revenue and save time, then check out the link below to apply to work with us. And if you're looking to grow and scale your own AI agency, my partner and I, we are opening up three more spots to work directly one on one with us, where we guarantee to start landing you clients and get you on the right track to becoming a successful AI consultant. Lastly, before I forget, you can get this template in my free school community as well. Now, what are all the different softwares that we're going to be using for this system? Well, one, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be using SERP API. Now, SERP API, you can use a free trial and this will last you, I think, a thousand searches. But after that, I think it's 50 or $75 a month. But there is a bunch of different softwares that are going to be cheaper. So 
mean, you can use something like Appify, you can use Rapid API, Bright Data. So there's going to be a whole different bunch of ones that are going to allow you to actually do Google Map searches. And of course, you can see down here that it's doing more than just Google Maps. So you can do Google Flights, Google Hotels. So there's a whole bunch of different options. Another one that we're going to be using is Perplexity. So Perplexity, you can get by with using just about $5. And this will last you, I don't know, four months, maybe depending how often you're using this API. But of course, the first thing that we're doing is we're starting off with our trigger right here. So we're just including a chat message. So I mean, you can have a trigger being a Slack message or a WhatsApp message. I think it's just easy to do a chat message. So every time you want to run the systems to get your leads, you can just come into N8N. Next up, we're going to be including a tools agent. With the tools agent, what we're doing is we're including our prompt. You are to help find contact information from the Google Maps tool. So here's the input to query. And then we're providing the input, which is just going to be our chat right here. So if we say Jim's in Columbus, that is going to be input it right here. So we just kind of drag and drop everything. And then next up, we're saying then once you are, so that looks like a typo right there. Then once the Google Maps tool is finished successfully, you must then run the store in maps tool. So we can see here that I have a typo, but that's all right. But anyways, we're calling a couple different tools. So all you'll have to do in this case is just call different workflow tools. But again, if you want this actual system, you can get it in my free school community. So we're doing a Google Maps tool and a store and cheese tool. But before we get into those, first thing you want to do is hook up a chat model. So the chat model, we're going to be using ChatGPT 4.0. So all you have to do is just click the little plus button, choose whichever LLM that you want to use. But next up, we're going to be calling an external workflow. So this one is going to actually be calling Google Maps. Now, before we set up this functionality right here, let's just get into building this separate workflow. So we have the um, workflow right here. So just open up a brand new workflow in N8N. And the first thing you want to search up is execute sub workflow, and you'll go to when executed by another workflow. Now, this is a new update within N8N. So you can actually change a few different input modes. So I'm going to be accepting all the data and you'll get a query something like this. So I mean, real estate agencies in Charlotte. So I could actually unpin this data. But next up, we're actually going to be doing our API call to SERP API. So this is where there can be variances. So if you want to use a different software, by all means, go ahead and use whichever one's going to be more suited for you, whether that's cheaper or faster, whatever. So what we're doing is we're doing a get request and we're finding the API documentation. So in the API documentation, we could find that our URL endpoint is serpapi.com slash search. So if we come into SERP API, if we just scroll down a little bit, we could see that we have the curl right here. So you could see that the serpapi.com slash search is the endpoint, but you could also literally just copy this board right here. And if you come over into bright data and you input the curl, all you do, just input right there and it'll do everything for you. You will have to input your own API key. If you just copy and paste that in right here, you'll import and as you see, it'll do literally everything for you. So it takes your API key. You will have to change up a few things. So you want to change. So the queue is going to be like the search. So if I search up gym owners, you'll want to, gym owners will be the queue essentially. The LL, that is the longitude and latitude. And you could even include page. So page will just be, of course, how many different pages you want to include on here. But I'm going to keep it relatively simple. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, we'll actually need a different piece of data. So let's go back and let's find some something that we can play around with. So let's copy to the editor. Actually, I want to refresh this. I'll go back into executions. I will find something from earlier that ran successfully. And now if I copy to the editor, I will unpin. So we can see that I have gyms in Columbus, Ohio. So we have the queue. All we're doing is we're just dragging in the query and we have the API key. So I didn't include the LL and also the page number. If you want to, you can include the page number, but I'm going to leave it alone for now. Next up, we're just going to do an edit fields. Now, if you're not familiar with edit fields from any of my past videos and edit fields allows us to communicate with the original agent, which is in a completely different workflow. So this Google Maps agent right here, this is going to be communicated with right here. So it's looking for a response. And this response is just going to include our results. And we get our results from, I open this up, we will see local results. All I'm doing is just dragging that in right there. So that's literally everything for one of the biggest pieces of this workflow, which is making an API call to serve. Now let's go back to our main workflow and let's focus on how we can actually store all the results that we just got into Google Sheets. We're going to be using a different workflow again. Now, similarly, we're going to be using a when executed by another workflow. So what we do is we similarly use accept all data and we're going to be using OpenAI. Now, there's a couple different options that you can go with here. Normally,
normally I would use a code function. We can see that everything is kind of sloppy right here. It's not in proper columns like it is right here. So I want the output to look something like this where all these schemas are in different columns. Right now, it's just too messy. Normally, what you probably should be doing is using code, you know, JavaScript or Python. And in the past, I would always have ChatGPT write this for me. I mean, I come from a background of not knowing how to code. So of course, I'm going to have ChatGPT or Claude write this code for me. And this is pretty much what I always do and what I pretty much always recommend because, you know, if you use like OpenAI or something, even though it's cheap, you know, you're just kind of wasting tokens. Unless you can't figure it out, then go with something like this. But what I'm doing here is just parsing this information, cleaning it all up. I'm saying your job is to analyze the query and provide a structured output for each category, like the name, website, email, phone number. So everything like it's listed right here. So all these are separate outputs. And in here, it's just not. One of the more important things is you will have to scroll down and output the content as JSON. And that's what's going to allow you to have different schemas right here. So we have like five different schemas. If I didn't include this, it's just going to be one giant schema and it'll just look like this again. So don't forget to include that button. Now, what this will look like then is we're going to have this output right here where it's going to be a long list of all these, you know, I think it's like 20 different outputs all included into one kind of long array. So what we want to do is we want to split this out. So if you just get your content, so what I did specifically is I grabbed gyms right here. And if you include all other fields, it's then going to split into 20 different items. Now, why we're doing 20 different items is because if we come into our CRM, we could see here, we could see that I have, you know, just 20 different entries. If we're not including a loop right here or a split out, then it's just going to include one record in Google Sheets. But we want it to be each one, you know, each company have its own record instead of just all be one column. So that's why we're using the split out because it's going to output as 20 different items. And then the loop is just going to, you know, once it finishes the first record, then it's going to do the same thing for the second one. So just do a loop. You don't have to change anything in here if batch size is going to be one. So connect the loop to Google Sheets. So it'll just keep on iterating. And within Google Sheets, we're literally just dragging and dropping. So we drag the name, we drag the address, phone number, website, rating, all that good stuff. And yeah, that's mainly it for this workflow. At the very end, of course, if you want to communicate that this workflow is finished to your original agent, you know, your separate workflow. Forgive me for being redundant and using workflow like a thousand times in this video, but you know, it is what it is. So we're going to set the field to response and the value is going to be done. And again, this will allow our agent that it's finished and it'll just return success to your agent. But anyways, the only other piece of this, so we're about 75% done. The only other piece of this is actually enriching the company. So researching all the information about them, creating that personalized first line, storing that into the Google Sheets, and then we can store that into our email campaign or email outreach campaign where it'll just automatically outreach to them. So normally you'll want to have this set as active if it's going to run. But what we have right here is we're first setting up a Google Sheets trigger. So anytime something is added into our database, it's going to trigger this workflow to start running. So we can see right here, I'm just going to run this every minute, hooked it up to my Google Sheet, and we can see that we have 19 items. So this is from the previous run. Now the filter right here, this is just going to make sure that we're not going to have any duplicates. Otherwise, it's just going to keep on running and keep on running and wasting all of our tokens from perplexity and open AI. That's why we're having this filter. So I'm just setting as perplexity search. If this is empty, then it'll pass through. Also, I didn't want it to include the company name column. So if I go all the way up to the top, it'll have company name right here. I just don't want to include this column. For some reason, it's including that and not recognizing that it's like a header. So I just has to throw that in there. But anyways, we're doing a similar thing from the past workflow where we're looping through items. So we want to iterate one at a time. So we want perplexity to only search one record, you know, one company at a time and not search every single company. So it's going to be using a lot of different tokens because it is, you know, it's running through perplexity, I don't know, 20 different times. And if you're running this 100 or 200 or a thousand times, you know, you'll have obviously a lot of tokens being used up. So make sure you're using the correct model for this. What I'm using in particular for perplexity is I'm using Sonar, but you can use Sonar small. So I would look into what's going to be the best for your particular use case. But anyways, once we run through this loop over items, the loop will be directing into perplexity where we're making an HTTP request also known as API call to perplexity. So the biggest thing here, make sure you go to perplexity, put in maybe five bucks, it'll last you a few months, and then you can grab your API key. So your API key, if you go into the settings, you know, you'll see API right there. I don't want to show mine off. If you go to the far right, you'll see API and you can get your API key down at the bottom. But anyways, if I go back into the main workflow, what I'm doing right here is I'm connecting the URL endpoint. So api.perplexity.ai slash chat slash completions. And the method is going to be post because, you know, if you remember from my previous videos on why we do something like this, it's because we're actually be posting data somewhere and not retrieving anything really. So within the JSON, we 
are, what I would recommend is to copy this or pause the video and copy what I'm saying because it can get a bit complex. So what I'm saying is your job is to find out as much information about this company. So we're just dragging the company over, putting it right there. Here's the website. Then you are to do extensive research to try and find any emails associated with this company. Provide each output as separate JSON outputs. Here's the address of the company. And I just included some other filler information like to respond in third person, whatever. So change it up as much as you would like. So if you want to search for maybe revenue of the company or anything else, achievements, then I would change it up. So the max tokens, I'm just going to be using 500. So this isn't anything crazy. You know, you could bump this up to a thousand and then the searches are going to be even better and you could change the temperature, whatever else. Now we're going to get something like this where it's just going to return your content. So we are then going to pass this into OpenAI. Now, this is where you're going to be generating our personalized first line. And to do that, we have to have the former context. So what we do right here is we provide a little bit about the company. So we're grabbing our perplexity search, we're dragging it into here, and then we're just dragging in the company name. So what I say here is you are to create a personalized first line for an email for this company. So you are to use the information found to create a one sentence first line. Feel free to read the rest, but this is, you'll pretty much have to change this up for yourself because you know if you're creating personalized first lines for your company to actually do outreach, it has to be very in line with what you're offering to whoever it is. So I highly recommend to not use what I'm putting right here and to make it more applicable to your specific scenario. Anyways, we'll get something like this where it's just going to show a brief one-liner that looks like everything for this specific part. And then really the only other thing we're doing is we're connecting this to Google Sheets. So we're storing the company name, we're then storing the perplexity search, the personalized line. And then the last node is going to be connecting to this HTTP request. We're just connecting to instantly. So again, if you want to use this and copy this HTTP request, you could get this in my free school community, but the URL endpoint is just going to be instantly.ai slash API slash V1 slash lead slash add. And the API key, of course, I'll have to loan because again, I don't want to put anything within my campaigns, but here is where you can put into in your manual information, the email. I mean, you'll probably have to parse it out from the perplexity search, but you know, you can grab the first name, the last name, the company name, and really whatever else you're finding. So like personalization, that's kind of the biggest thing that we're looking for right here is adding that personalized first line. So add that in yourself, but yeah, that's really essentially it for this entire system. I mean, it's relatively simple, but I really just wanted to get it out to you guys to show you how you can actually find leads for free because normally this is a process that I would actually do manually when I'm lead sourcing. So lead sourcing takes me forever. I mean, if I'm going about using Google Maps to find local businesses or somebody in a specific area that I want to service, then this is how you can do it automatically and just pull all the information for yourself. But yeah, that's really it. And again, if you're trying to get this template, then check out my free school community where you can get it for yourself. As always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.